Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install FileCloud. Uh, this has been a requested video from several people. Uh, I've seen other videos on it uh, online. So I thought I would go ahead and make a video for it here on this channel. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that while we're doing this, we're going to be using uh, Traffic and Cloudflare on a custom URL. So uh, if you're not sure how to set up Cloudflare and Traffic with a custom uh, URL, uh, go ahead and check out the video that I've got linked in the description. Uh, I did a whole uh, dedicated video on how to set that up. Uh, once you've got that figured out, uh, then come back and check this one out. It's gonna make this go a lot, lot faster. And actually one of the prerequisites to this video, the way I'm gonna set it up, is having traffic set up with a domain name and Cloudflare running your SSL. So uh, that pretty much sums up all of this stuff we need to know going into this. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at FileCloud. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and we are taking a look at the FileCloud Community Edition. Uh, by default, you'll go to getfilecloud.com. Uh, and then if you hover over here where it says products, go down to where it says FileCloud Community Edition. The one thing I will say about this, and maybe I should have said this sooner, is that uh, you get a 14 day free trial to check it out. Uh, if you wanna uh, go past that 14 day trial, it is a $10 per year license fee, uh, but they say that all of that, uh, all of the proceeds from that go to charities. So uh, it looks like they're doing a good thing here uh, with the community edition. So uh, just something to keep in mind there. So in order to, uh, to get started here, we will wanna get that community edition 14-day uh, free trial. So we can go ahead and click this. Uh, we can uh, put in some information here. Uh, we'll, uh, oops. And we'll say start free trial. This should uh, give us a, a, an XML file to download uh, that we'll go ahead and then re-upload to our server once it's set up. Okay, so it said that it sent it in, a, in an email, so let's go ahead and check that real quick. Okay, so here we are, we're taking a look at the email that they sent over, and it looks like uh, it did go to my spam folder, so that's definitely something to check out there. The next thing we need to do is actually uh, go ahead and log in with the credentials that they sent over there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click the link there, and uh, then we'll go ahead and sign in. And uh, we can go ahead and say, oops, select an industry. Uh, we're just going to say that, and I don't really think this matters for what we're doing. We're going to say begin trial. We're going to say download a trial license. So right here, you can see that I've done this a few times. Uh, License3.xml uh, was downloaded to my downloads folder. We'll use that here in just a little while. I just wanted to get that out of the way uh, so that we'll uh, have it available when we want to actually uh, configure the server. So let's go ahead and close out some folder or some, some uh, tabs there we don't need. Um, Really, we're actually done with the Git uh, File Cloud website. We've done everything there that we really need to do, uh, but we can, so we can go ahead and close that. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll jump over here to the hub.docker.com page with the official release. Uh, we'll scroll down. This will be available in the link or in the, the blog post that's linked in the description down below. Uh, there's a couple of options on how to run this, uh, either with or without a database. Uh, it's gonna be better overall, I believe, to run it with a database, just so that things run a little bit more smoothly. So. Uh, what we've got here uh, is just a script that you would run in Portain or in, uh, in an SSH client, and that works, but it's not terribly intuitive and it's not as easy to read. So what I've gone ahead and done uh, is I've got it set up over here, oops, in a, um, in a text file here. Uh, so this is the original that you can see here. Uh, if you kind of break it down line by line, uh, that's what it looks like, but even that, um, isn't great in my opinion. So I went ahead and just rewrote it as a stack. So we can actually drop this into Portainer. Uh, this is a version two. So if you're running in swarm mode, you may have to change that to work in version three, uh, but this should work just on a, uh, on a regular server, uh, just uh, without swarm mode enabled without any issues. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab uh, this. We'll jump over to Portainer. We'll go into stacks. Um, we'll click on add a stack and we'll paste this in here. <clears throat> and then we'll give it a name like so. Now the first uh, six lines are pretty standard stuff. We're not gonna change anything there. Uh, this is all just what you would need in order to get the container started. Now below that, we've got labels for 
uh, for traffic. Now, this is why I said earlier that uh, having traffic set up uh, is important here because we're going to use traffic as uh, our router, basically, on our server. Uh, and so basically we've got some labels here that I'll talk about. Uh, the first one is just saying use traffic on this container. That's fine. Uh, the next thing that we're going to have is uh, the host. That's going to be the URL that you will use for uh, your uh, file cloud instance. I'm going to use my cloud. Actually, I'm just going to use cloud.dbtechdemo.com. Uh, uh, below that, we've got uh, a router saying use the web network for this to work. And below that, we're actually explicitly telling it to use port 80. Uh, I tried using or tried setting this up without that line and it just didn't work. So uh, this, this is one of those rare cases where I had to stipulate, hey, use port 80 for this container. Uh, below that, we're telling it to, again, uh, we're telling the container to use the web network. Um, and then we've got uh, a volume for the database. Uh, we've got a, a, a volume for uh, part of the functionality in here. And then we've got a, uh, another one for the actual storage for the container. Uh, this is going to be where all of your files are going to go once you've got it set up. Whether, when you put it on your phone, when you put it on your computer, all of your files are going to get stored here. So I've actually got a, a folder set up in OMV. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oops, so we'll say 192 like that. We'll go ahead and take a look in here real quick. Oops. <clears throat> so if we come into shared folders here, uh, we actually don't have this set up. So what I'll do is I'll actually create a file cloud uh, folder. Uh, so I'll click add. I'll just paste that in, tell it where it needs to go. Uh, for the permissions, we're going to say everybody can read and write. We'll click save. And then we'll go to SMB CIFS in the bottom left corner there. Um, oops, I didn't actually click like so. Uh, make sure this is enabled, click save, go to shares, click on add a share, uh, find your file cloud, set public to only guests and click save. Then we'll click apply and we'll say yes. So these first two volumes are going to be uh, just folders that are already on your OMV, your Open Media Vault, your Docker server. Those are already gonna be there. Uh, this, this last one is the one we just created. And in order to get that, what we'll do is we'll go to shared folders, or to get that path, I mean. Um, and you should see something that looks very similar to this. If you don't see the absolute path there, uh, you can hover over this header or these header lines up here. Any of them will work. Just click the drop down arrow, go to columns, toggle absolute path on. Uh, in fact, just to show you this, um, just like that, you can toggle that on and off. Um, and then you can just grab this, right click, go to inspect, uh, copy that, and then just paste it in there. Oops, like so. And now you've got all of your paths for your volumes uh, ready to mount. Uh, below that, we've got uh, restart unless stopped. Uh, that's pretty standard. If there's a hiccup, something goes wrong, it'll just automatically restart it unless you specifically go in there and stop the container. So. That's basically everything that we need. Uh, normally we wouldn't have this in there, but again, we want this to be accessible from basically anywhere. Uh, and again, in order for this to work, you will have to have uh, traffic and Cloudflare set up. You'll have to have forwarded ports 80 and 443 on your router to your server, uh, but that should get you pretty much set up there. Uh, once you've got all of this set up, you can just scroll down, click on deploy the stack, and give this a couple of minutes to download. Now, the one thing I will say here is I believe this is like a three gig download. So um, maybe that's something I should have mentioned earlier as well, but uh, it's definitely one of those things that's going to take a little while, depending on your internet connection speed. So just hang out, be patient, uh, maybe, uh, maybe go grab a cup of coffee and uh, just hang out and wait for this to finish. Okay, so here we are. It has finally finished loading. Uh, it took a little while, several minutes. Again, it is like a three gig download in order to, to uh, get this set up. So we'll go ahead and click in here. We can see that it's running. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Looks like everything here is going well. So let's go back to uh, containers. Let's make sure that we've got all of the, uh, the correct settings in here. Uh, let's make sure this all looks good. Network, uh, see sometimes that one doesn't work. That's why I wanted to check. So we'll go ahead and set that to web. Uh, we'll make sure we've got our labels set up correctly. That all looks good. So we'll go ahead and say deploy the container. We'll say yes. Or replace as the case may be there. <clears throat> all right. So 
Uh, let's go ahead and open the logs back up. We'll give this a second to load and uh, do its thing so we can see that uh, all of the services have started. And I guess while we're waiting, I'll go ahead and grab that URL and we'll minimize this. All right, so now we've got all of our services started here. So we'll go ahead and paste that in. We'll click on go. Okay, so this is the, uh, the main screen here when you go there. What we wanna do is actually change core in the URL to admin. And we'll say, I believe it's admin and password. There we go. Okay, so there's a, a welcome here. I'm gonna close that. Uh, that kind of gives you uh, just an overview of how things work, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna go and close that for right now. And immediately you're asked to upload your license. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We, we don't have to do that right now. And I will show you where to go upload that in case you wanna skip this and look around first. Uh, but we'll go ahead and choose file. Uh, we'll go to my downloads. Uh, we'll grab license three and we'll say apply. Okay, and then we should be good to go there. So we've got some uh, notifications over here that we wanna go ahead and take a look at. So uh, the first thing it wants you to do is go remove the root or the install folder for, uh, for this. And that's just for security reasons. I don't know why it doesn't do that automatically, but it doesn't, I think they, I think they should add it to the uh, install script, but what do you do? So <clears throat> what we wanna do is go into settings. So we'll scroll down to the left over here, we'll go to settings. Uh, and here we can see that the server URL is right here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just grab this, I'll copy it, I'll paste that in there and I'll say, uh, click check URL, server URL is valid, that's good. So we'll say close and we'll click save. Um, <clears throat> so then we can go over here and we can take a look at some of these other uh, things. Uh, so like here it says, uh, set an admin email, go to settings and email. So we can go over here to settings and email. Uh, we can say uh, admin at dbtechreviews.com. That's not really an email address, but I don't care. So we'll say save. Uh, you can also go into, uh, go down a little further here and actually set up the SMTP information so that this can use an actual email address to send you notification emails uh, for the server. Uh, in fact, I really do recommend doing that. Uh, Gmail works really well. That's how I've got it set up on my uh, my production server. I actually use Gmail uh, email accounts for all of this and it works really, really well. Uh, so you would just go in and fill in all of the information here that you need to fill in. Uh, so we've done that and we've done that and we're gonna skip that. Uh, so for settings, admin, go to, uh, so we wanna go to the geo IP data generation. Uh, let's actually uh, close these out. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure. So they've got antivirus in there uh, that you can use if you want to, probably a good idea, especially if you're gonna make this uh, open and available to other users. Um, so definitely uh, go in here and, and make sure that uh, all of these different things uh, are set up to your liking uh, before you try to go too far into this. Definitely go through each of these tabs and set these things up. Now, the one thing I will say that's a little bit unfortunate for uh, the community version of this is if you go to customization, there's not really a whole lot you can change in here, I don't believe. Um, like right now, I've got a, uh, a temporary license. If you use an actual um, community license, you're gonna get restricted on some of the customization stuff you can do back here. Uh, I feel like if you're paying for it, you should be able to get more customization. Uh, but when I put in my $10 a year license, it actually removed some of the customization stuff in there, which I was kind of disappointed with. Um, but that is pretty much everything you need to know in order to get set up here. Um, there is, of course, a desktop app that you can take a look at. There's also an Android app that you can take a look at. There's probably an iOS app as well. So one other thing I wanted to mention here, if you go back to the dashboard, uh, here you're gonna see a temp disk usage, a uh, little graph right here. And it's going to use your main hard drive, not the one that you mounted, but the actual main hard drive for your device 
uh, as a temporary folder and you can't remount that. I've tried several things, or maybe you can't. I've tried several things and couldn't get it the, the temp folder to mount somewhere else. If you know how, definitely leave that in the comments and I will uh, update the blog post linked in the description with that good information. Here you can see license usage. Uh, I don't have any users set up other than the admin user, but uh, you can come over here to uh, users and uh, add a user just by filling in this information here. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so the one thing that we wanna do, uh, like it said, in fact, I believe if I come back to here and I refresh, Yeah, so it's still got some stuff that it wants me uh, to change here. And the big one again is this installation folder. So let's go ahead and look at removing that. So in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll go and we'll open up Putty. And we'll drag this up and we'll log in. Uh, I wish we quit putting it over there. Say root. Like that and then all right, so we're looking for this var slash www slash install. So what I'm gonna do is just paste this in here. This again, will be available in the blog post and we will say uh, install. And I'm actually gonna make this pretty big because some of these, uh, some of the, re the, the results will be fairly long. So we'll give this a second to search the server for a folder called install. Okay, so after having done this a few times, I know which folder that I'm looking for. Uh, here, you, you, may, you may have several of these uh, in your search results. And what we wanna look for is uh, two of them that are right next to each other that have the same path uh, up to the point where you get to diff and merged. And what we're looking for uh, is the merged version of that. So, oops, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna to change to that directory. It's a, like I said, it's a very long directory. So we're just gonna uh, go ahead and change to that directory and we'll do an LS to list everything in there. And then what we're gonna do, I, I just like to rename this uh, just to make sure that I don't screw anything up. So we're gonna say, uh, our, uh, nope, we're gonna say MV uh, install uh, space install RM, just as a reminder to remove uh, that so we'll go ahead and do that. Then if we do LS again, uh, we can see that it renamed that folder to install RM. So again, if I read or refresh that page, uh, we shouldn't, yeah, so that one uh, notification up there went away. That tells us that uh, we, we actually successfully removed that installation folder. Uh, the other stuff in here, you can go into the settings and change those uh, in order to make this happy. So there's one other thing that I almost forgot to mention, and that is how to update your server if you decide to purchase a community license for the 10 bucks a year. So uh, what you'll do is you'll uh, scroll over, you'll go to settings, uh, you're gonna look for this license tab up here, you're gonna click that. Uh, here you can see I've got 13 days left on this license, and that's fine. Uh, but if you decide to go purchase that license, uh, it should drop it into your uh, into your account, the one that we uh, set up to get our temp license. If it doesn't, you can actually just email them and they'll get you taken care of. I've had that happen uh, when I was setting up my home server, my production server. Uh, I purchased it, it didn't show up. I just shot them an email and they got everything fixed. Uh, it was overnight. So uh, I emailed, emailed them late at night, right before I went to bed, woke up the next morning, the license was there waiting for me. So they got to it pretty quickly. But then all you gotta do, choose file, uh, upload the XML file that you get from them, and then your license is good for another year. Okay guys, there you go. There's how to set up FileCloud. Uh, it's not, actually not too complicated. Uh, when I first started hearing about it, uh, I thought it was gonna be way more involved, uh, you know, a lot like uh, NextCloud was or OwnCloud. Uh, that one was way more complicated to get set up. I think the guys here at FileCloud have done a really good job of getting their Docker set up uh, really well. So congratulations to them. Uh, and I hope uh, going through this video, you found it helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, if you want to, uh, obviously check out the blog post in the description down below so that you can get this set up on your own server. While you're down there looking in the description, there's gonna be some, other, some additional links on ways you can support the channel. Uh, at the very top, you're gonna see some merch. Uh, feel free to check that out if you're interested. Uh, below that, in the description, there will be a link for coffee uh, where you can do like a one-time tip uh, or you can 
can do a Patreon thing. Uh, there are a few different levels uh, at which you can subscribe. The five and ten dollar levels will give you access to a uh, patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat if you want to do that. So I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Of course, if you've got questions, comments, uh, notice things I screwed up and want to talk about that, definitely leave all that in the comment section down below. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.